Well, more than 300 social service professionals have been sent to areas affected by this flooding in KZN. SASA has also increased the relief grant for some flood victims. Development or Social Development Deputy Minister Henrietta Bogapane Zulu uh, joining us now. Uh, Deputy Minister, good morning to you. So uh, I think for those tuning in might not be aware of the details, Deputy Minister. Can you tell me what it's been increased from and what is the new amount? Good morning. Good morning and thank you very much. Um, there's two different uh, areas. You've got our normal food voucher that costs 700 rand. It has gone now, uh, and the families get 1,400 rand. So you double what we have been giving. Um, but we also upped the normal grant, especially to uh, often and vulnerable children which makes it a, like easier for us to not necessarily go to court all the time, but for children that live with families and also for children who find themselves the only survivor for them to be able to get the basics that they need. So I just want to make sure that there's no confusion what we're talking about here, Deputy Minister. There's an increase on two of these uh, grants. Is this only for victims of KZN flooding? And if so, how is that proven? Yes. Remember the disaster is declared for the province of, of, of KZN. So part of what we're doing is to make sure that the people in KZN have food as they have lost everything, cats, blankets, and we as colleagues among ourselves give each other feedback to be able to identify where the most uh, damage is. So, yeah, that's exactly uh, what we do because social relief of distress is not a new concept. Mm. We have it, it's there in the Social Assistance Act. What is different is throughout it's only South Africans uh, that actually receives, qualifies and receives relief. But in a disaster, you can't now say to somebody from wherever, please, please start going, you know. You can't say that because when, when disaster, especially na natural ones, that's what we suspend to ensure that we assist even those that are there disparate and then we can deal with the paperwork. So it's not just locals is, is what you're saying uh, Deputy Minister as well. I imagine though with this increase the logistics behind this off the back of a disaster must be very difficult. Help me understand how your department's going to handle the paperwork considering that so many victims have lost their IDs, they've lost their passports, they've lost their home affairs papers, they've lost childbirth certificates. It's a big issue you're dealing with, of course I understand that. Just help me understand how are we going to try and make this as smooth a process as possible. What's the plan? Firstly, um, as social development, one of the things we structured uh, at four levels, we've got the national, we've got the province, districts and local. And in all, and those offices are fully staffed. So when we say team DSG, uh, SASA is exactly structured like that as our entity. Social development is structured like that. So when they, and then you've got the National Development Agency, that's the social development family. So they go out as a team and I have been going out with them. It is a time where the devastation, you can see it. And people are so traumatized that there really isn't time or space um, to to try and do anything that is illegal because it's a real devastation that I can talk to. So I think at this stage, there are things where uh, things happen, but this time around, especially for beneficiaries, mm, mm. we have started making sure we make them comfortable. 
Deputy Minister, someone sending me a tweet a moment ago asking me to ask you. So there's this increase uh, for the relief grant on both relief grants at the moment. Is this automatically in place for everyone, a in KZN for the flood victims, or does a flood victim need to apply to get this increase? I understand it's just for KZN and it's just for the flood victims, but must they apply for the increase or is it automatic uh, in their accounts, automatically paid out? No, it cannot be automatically paid out. When a disaster is declared, uh, then the prof joints are put together to ensure that there isn't a lot of double tipping. As department, we coordinate. At the moment, we are coordinated by KZN and disaster management. So if we are in Duna or a, a, a what councillor at that level, you send your reports directly to the disaster management. We get the data from them. That's the first thing. The second thing, it only applies to those that are flood victims. And it's very easy for us. I mean, I've been out three, four days, not in the city, in the deepest rural areas. Everything that, that you see, people know what has happened to them. And they, they even tell you, or in this family, they, there's no food, there's no clothes, there's anything. We spoke to children because I can't not hear the voices of children. Mm. And the biggest worry of the children is going back to school because the books are not there, their uniforms are not there. They have absolutely nothing. They only have the clothes that they are wearing. So we had to, you know, in the confusion, talk to children and really um, give them the counselling, but in their at their level. Uh, Deputy Minister, I'm about to say goodbye to you, and there's a lot you're dealing with, and I understand. I just want to circle back one more time to uh, the uh, victims that do qualify for this increase of relief grant, because I, can, I know I'm going to get to ask the question on social media, how can someone apply? Because right now it's difficult to get into rural areas. You were just talking about the fact you were there. Some people aren't able to get out. The roads are damaged. How does someone apply for this if they feel they qualify? What can they do? They can apply uh, to the SASA offices uh, at the local level if they are able to. They can apply online and there are just, uh, like steps when you apply, then there's a verification. In this case, the verification is the disaster management center. That must confirm that says no. Henrietta is uh, on the list. She is on this because you must give information. I'm at what, what, what? And this is what I have gone through. Mm. We send it to the Disaster Management Center in KwaZulu-Natal, which is the overall. And when they stamp lists, for an example, that comes to the, whether it's people calling, it's us going out and, and seeing the people. So we use multiple, but the one that is used, um, it's the Disaster Management Center. And we ensured that you've got the provincial disaster management the district disaster disaster management and the local disaster management, uh, which is where the war room offices are. So you can go to the war room offices. You can go to your traditional uh, leader as office, and actually, um, you go talk to your ward councillor. Yeah. So, as you send that information, we've released the. Um, quality, like the criteria uh, to enable for us to still verify and not give you gray hair. And this is the whole point, is to try and make it as easy as possible. It looks like there are a number of ways of doing this. Deputy Minister, thank you so very much. I think you've answered, I think, the more practical questions as to how this is going to be done. I really appreciate your time. Social Development Deputy Minister Henrietta Bogapane Zulu uh, joining us here. This is the, the increase in the relief grant for flood victims. You do need to apply for it. There has been.
uh, an increase uh, on the uh, relief grants from SASA, but you do need to go online, go to your local office if you can get there, try and find a local councillor, a local traditional leader. There are ways to do it, but you do need to apply for it.